Hi, my name is Confreda, and today I'm going to be doing a video about just what do you do when you're in trouble, <laughs> um, or, or just having troubles, we could say that as well. Um, actually, it's, it's kind of funny that I'm doing this because you know, just some things happened in my life just recently where I'm trying to figure out what to do, um, kind of put a damper on what I've been doing or the plans that I've had, um, you know, whether it's financial or what you're going to do with your time. Um, so this is actually going to be good for me as well. It's funny how when you're studying scriptures for, like for instance, for me doing this, I love it because I'm reading all these scriptures and I'm seeing ones that really are helping me at the exact same time that I'm studying them for the video. So hopefully <laughs> this will help somebody else but i can tell you today this is gonna help me too because this thing that just arised is it could be a game changer for me as far as it doesn't look good but i'm trying to think that maybe that this thing happening as God says, all things work together for our good, for those that love the Lord. And here I am just doing what I've been doing, and it's been working, and I'm happy with it, having fun with it. And now it just may not be worth my while to do it. And I'm thinking, well, it was a lot of work, but there was a lot of benefits, too something I like to do, you know, and, uh, but will it be profitable? It doesn't seem like it will be now going forward. Maybe don't know hundred percent yet, but I'm just like, okay, now what do I do now? I'm thinking maybe other people might be in a similar situation. Now with you, it could be, finances it could be a situation with maybe family or friends or your job things going on at work that you're not happy about changes being made you know um you know maybe like corporate coming in and and changing the rules and maybe taking away things that you were used to or liked and maybe not allowing them anymore just things that let's just say if we let them could cause stress you know um, some people handle change better than others but I think we have to realize that sometimes change is good we can't see it we kind of get used to the same old same old and I never really liked change. I remember as good to how old I am. Yeah, because I'm old. Um, I remember every job I had, you know, was when they were bringing in computers, I was glad I was leaving, you know, because I was the typewriter girl who worked on the typewriter, yeah. And uh, I was just glad, you know, glad I'm leaving because I don't even want to learn that thing, you know, it just seemed too complicated I don't particularly like complicated things but you know had I given it a chance maybe back then I probably might not be so um, oh I don't even know if this is a word unknowledgeable about it today you know having to have someone else always help you because you don't take the time sometimes when we're forced into things it forces us to maybe rise to the occasion. I don't know, you know, um, cause I've seen people, you know, they leave jobs every time something happens or I don't like the new boss or I don't like the new girl or, you know, I don't like the new rules. And, you know, when you find yourself always being, you know, or you see somebody like how many jobs did you have this year? You know, like, 
Oh, but it's always the boss's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. They did me wrong and they shouldn't have done this. And, uh, you know, you got to look at the common denominator sometimes. Now, not 100% of the time, because sometimes, you know, it might be God's will for you to move on. And that's something you, if you're close to the Lord, you know, he'll let you know that, you know, and, uh, and I guess you could probably tell that depending on how you leave. You know, if you leave bitter and in strife, eh, I don't know if that was God. You know, you leave when God tells you that it's time. You know, even if the changes that made were difficult, you know, that doesn't mean you're to leave, but it doesn't always mean you're to stay. That's what you really got to seek the Lord. And as the Word of God says, if you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. So it's not just when you're in a, a sickness or a, 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 a desperate situation. It could be something like that. I mean, because your job is important and where you work and how long. You know, you want to be in the will of God. And uh, sometimes there might not be anything going wrong and the Lord prompts you to go somewhere. So what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to look at the good in the situation that I'm facing that potentially for me doesn't look so good. You know, may have to just change everything and then really going to have to seek the Lord and then also trust him to make up what I would probably be losing. But, but, you know, <laughs> God says all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. So um, that's what I'm thinking here. I'm going to take it to the Lord. I'm going to pray and say, God, is this, what do you want me to do with this? You know, and it's that, that relationship with the Lord. And I just encourage you if you don't have that as of yet. Because um, I remember when I first started, you know, somebody said, oh, just ask the Lord or, you know, the Lord will tell you this or that and I'm like ah, you know why don't you ask him and tell me what he says you know if you're not used to hearing from the Lord or hearing his voice um, then yeah you're gonna be kind of you might make a decision more out of fear or desperation um, or even you're just upset and you think well you know I'm not supposed to be treated this way or something and then make a decision not knowing, you know, kind of in a sense, yeah, God wants you to have a job, but who knows the future of that job or that company? And maybe you've been at this job for a very long time. Who knows? Maybe God does want you to leave, but then maybe you just have to, you know, spend some more time in prayer so that God can give you grace to hang in there because, you know, things could end up turning around and turn out good. You know what I'm saying? Just because something upsetting happens doesn't always mean it's for you to you know jump ship there you know so otherwise you'll be going from job to job to job to job to job you know and I have I will say I know of one instance with a person that had many jobs in one year but it was something that always happened with like say the company closed down or go into the next company and they wanted this person to do something that was wrong you know against their conscience so then they had to go on to another job and then you know it's, it's something kept happening but what was happening was it was God promoting this person because they had been faithful and you know didn't talk about the company or the people and they just kept trusting God and, and God just kept promoting them you know as they were faithful in one place Oh, I got something even better and then something better, you know, because the Bible does say that it is the Lord who gives us the power to get wealth. You're not just working for that boss. If you're truly working for the Lord, as we should be, because he's watching, he sees everything, not just your actions, but your attitude, you know, and um, the Bible says it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. So he's the one that's going to promote you. Do you understand? And you say, well, you know, I'm the one that's honest and they're promoting that person that's not so good or honest and they just came in and I've been here. 
well, maybe it's not God's will for you to have that position because he has something better for you later down the line. You never know. You know what I'm saying? You have to trust the Lord and always make sure you're walking in love. Don't get bitter. Don't get mad. Don't start running your mouth and talking against the people that got the uh, promotion or the boss that gave it to them or whatever. You got to keep it in love in order for God to promote you if maybe he wants you to hang in there for a while because he has something better later. Or he knows later down the line, even in this job, something good's going to happen. See, he knows the future. Um, remember, oh, my favorite, my favorite, where is it? Um, where it says that the Lord will guide us and lead us. The Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us into all truth. You know, I say that scripture probably just about every time you think I would have taped it up somewhere. Um, but I'll hopefully find it here. But if not, it is, that's what the Bible does say. That the Lord will guide us and lead us into all truth, the Holy Spirit, and He will show us the future or the things to come because you have to understand He knows and we don't. Okay? So, as far as that goes. But I also know that sometimes when things happen, it seems like a bad thing. Okay? I'm going to tell you the funny, two funny little things that show you how a bad thing happened, but it was to alert to something good to be found out. <laughs> I'm just going to do this so you kind of know what I'm talking about. For instance, okay, my car. Um, it started making this really loud noise. And so I took it in. And had it not all of a sudden one morning start making this really loud noise, I wouldn't have taken it in, you know? And it was something because I got it back and I'm like, okay, the noise is still there. Because I wasn't there at the time. I didn't pick it up. I think I had somebody pick it up for me. And I'm like, so I started up and it's still real loud. I'm like, I called him. I said, um, did you not fix <laughs> why I brought it in? You know, I was kind of like a little, hmm, what went on? You know, what'd you do? And uh, you know what? It was really something because... Though I didn't get that fixed, and they didn't fix what I took it in there for, the noise, but he said, you know, when you brought it in, we found something that was would have been very dangerous to you. He said the back tire was literally going to fall off, and probably would have, had I continued to drive it. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I kind of calmed myself right now. I said, oh, thank you, and thank you to the Lord, you know? So, um, that was one thing I thought, wow, you know, and then there was another thing over the pipes in the house. Okay, fine. You know, we, um, were trying to, there was a leak, you know, the pipe fell down, you know, through the floor. I'm like, what in the world? You know, what is going on here? You know, that was a problem. But then as we were doing that, we had found out that there had been a leak all along and the floor was ready to cave in. But had we not had the pipe fall through the floor in the back, we would never have noticed when we put our hand down on the main floor that it had been leaking all along and had rotted out the main floor. So I was like, oh my gosh, there was another incidence of something yucky happening that had we not been alerted to it or had to deal with it, we wouldn't have found the other problem. I can't tell, I've got more and more stories like this. Kind of like, here's another one, real quick. <laughs> uh, now that I'm just thinking about it, okay. My mower broke. Okay, that's not good. You gotta mow here because the grass grows really fast and really high and you don't mow, you get a ticket. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, the mower, the mower, the mower broke. That's terrible, it's awful, it's horrible. Well, okay, so somebody comes and fixes the mower. So, but I would have been mowing that day, okay? Had it not been broken, I would have been mowing. And that day, a huge, huge limb from my tree came down right where I would have been mowing in, in the front yard. Very, I mean, there's it, because it was so large, it, it ran 
probably half of the front yard, you know, and what are the chances that I could have missed it? You know, yeah, there was more of the front yard I could have been on, but it was so huge and so long. There was a chance I could have been in that front yard because that's where I was going to mow that day. That front exact front yard where the log fell that day that I would have been mowing. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to look at things sometimes as though, you know, it's almost going to give me tears. So like even this thing, like with me, I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is just so that the Lord will maybe, I found this out, maybe just so that I'm supposed to be doing something maybe different, you know, and I have to seek the Lord's face and spend time with him in prayer and, and uh, praying in the spirit, you know, just saying, okay, Lord, what do I do now, you know? If this is true going forward, is this where you want me to stay? Or should I change directions? Because sometimes, as you can see, that something that appears to be not so good might just be for you to change directions or plans for that day, which usually results, as you can see from my, what was that, how did I tell three or four little stories, how it turned out for my good. It was all about good. Because that's what God is about. It's, he's always good to us. You know, sometimes we don't even understand. You know that scripture is a good one to start out the year. It's um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. Because sometimes we don't understand or, or we think we do. Because this is not what I had planned. Because I wanted to do that. And, and this is what I've been doing and I'm good with it and I want to do it. It's working. But maybe God has other plans, you know? Well, let me finish the scripture, okay? Lean not unto your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll direct your path. So he might have a different path for you that day or week or month, you know? Um, also, there's another scripture. I don't have it written down, but it says that we make our plans. And it's good. To make plans for your day and for your year whatever your goals we make our plans but the Lord orders our steps and you know we can even pray that and I, I hopefully I'll remember to do that at the end though that Lord I and I say this sometimes I say Lord you know I want your will to be done this is what I want to do this is what I think you want me to do but is this is it correct am I correct you know, if I'm wrong, please change my heart, change my mind, because this is what I feel you want me to do. If I'm wrong, let me know, because I'm not hearing that. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, this is what you want me to do. So let me know if I'm wrong, <laughs> okay? Because I want, not what, because so many times we just make our plans, and we go here, and I we go there, and this looks good at the moment, you know, and this is what everybody else is doing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you're supposed to do. Because I've seen people sometimes go into occupations or jobs and everybody else was doing it and they were doing fantastic at it, but they had other gifts and they had other callings and it wasn't God's will for them to do it. And so it didn't necessarily work and then we think, well, God failed us and I lost all my money and all my investment and everything, but was it God's will for you? You know what I'm saying? So for it, so it's really important to get in that secret place with the Lord every day to find out, Lord, you know, this is what I have planned for today. What is your will for me today? What do you want me to do? Show me. Guide me and lead me by your Holy Spirit so that I do your will. You know, pray that you would know his will. Not only know it, but walk in it. Because walking in it is a little bit harder. It's like knowing the Bible. Oh, I can know the Bible and read it, but doing it. <laughs> the Bible says be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So are you doing the word? You know it, but are you doing it? We have to obey the word of God, right? For it to work. So 
Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just sometimes I start talking and it's like a whole bunch of different than what I had originally planned. But I pray that you know somebody's getting blessed by it. So um, I'm gonna just read some of the scriptures that I had written for today, and I think that. Um, you know, here's another thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that life does not always um, go perfect. Obviously, we all know that, right? But my concern is that, you know, I was going to say where this is coming from. I, I, you know where it's coming from. It's like the enemy. He, he's all about let's give up. Let's, you know, kill ourselves or let's. Um, there's no hope and you're not going to make it and you're never going to change. Life will never change. And, and, and people get really destitute and they get desperate and they get, they lose hope. And, um, this goes along with the, uh, I've did some videos called, um, a world without God and people are opting for a lot of new age, you know, practices and things to try to find peace, to find, try to find joy, um, you know, emptying themselves and filling themselves up with the planet or something, whatever they're doing is, it's actual, just, you know, it, it's a world without God and people that do stuff like that, you know, I call it looking for love in all the wrong places. What you need is God and he'll fulfill every desire and every need and show you your purpose and why you were born and how to live and how to be blessed and how to get through tough times, which is what we're talking about today, that it's not the end of the world. You know, I was thinking about this this morning. It's like people get, they don't like when it rains. Okay. But, but now some people do, but I'm talking about the ones that don't puts a damper on their day. Some people would even takes them to a point of depression. It's that bad. That's not most people, but some people, it really, the, the darker days, the, the, those kind of days, the dismal, dreary, they, it puts them in bad moods and, and stuff like that. And, but then other people like it, like, oh, this is a great day to clean. You know, it's kind of on how you look at it. So we have to watch that. Um, just because a group of people or somebody says, you know, this is what you should do to solve your problem, okay? That doesn't mean you should do it. As you can see, everybody has a different perspective. Why do some people love when it rains and some people, I mean, it, it would actually put them in a, a state of depression if, they, if it rained, you know, on and on and on. It was dark and dreary. They, they can't handle that. Why is that? So I, I want people to know that, um, you know, we have to do things according to the Word of God in order to be successful, even in those dark, dreary, stressful, horrible, awful times that we go through, because we are going to go through them. Um, God has given us a few little, let me um, grab this here. I wrote this down um, in... 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, 18. It, here's a few little things to help you through those dark days, the days of trouble, I'll call them. You know, when it could be everything from a, a, a bad report from a doctor, it could be a bad report from your job, it could be something arising in the family that can't seem to get resolved and everybody's all upset and fighting and fussing and this thing's been going on for years and it's just causing havoc or you could have a neighbor that you can't get along with and that could make your life miserable as well because you're living next to them gosh knows could be forever you know if you stay there you know and it's like what do you do get up and move every time quit your job leave your marriage uh well you can't abandon your children because uh, uh, you don't get along you can't have if some people can abandon their relatives, you know, they don't see them for a while or we can't walk out on every situation. It, it's not possible for a lot of situations. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so this advice here from the Lord, um, again, it's First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, 18. It says, rejoice always. Are you doing that? Pray without ceasing. Are you doing that? In everything, give thanks. Are you doing that? <laughs> the reason I'm saying this is because, you see, the Lord has given us ways to get through tough times. But if we're not willing to do them, we're going to get stuck in those tough times. And we may make decisions that affect our lives, but not in the best way. You could get out of God's will for your life. Just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's not God's will. Okay, I brought up the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before. You know, they were thrown in the fiery furnace. That had to be a very difficult situation. But what happened in that situation, because they weren't willing to bow down to another idol, okay, other than the one true God. And what happened? God showed up. See, God can show up in the darkest times. If you're willing to turn to him and not get bitter and angry and mad and start running your mouth, you know, just say, Lord, you know, be humble. Lord, I don't understand. You can cry if you want. Lord, I don't understand. Help me. You know, you just cry out to him. Do what he said. Just keep rejoicing. That's hard to do. You see, these are acts of faith in obedience to the word of God. God said, be a doer of the word. He's telling you some things that are definitely going to help you get out of these tough times. He's telling you things to get you out of these tough times. Rejoice. I know. You say, well, I don't feel like rejoicing. That's why you have to rejoice. These are supernatural things from a supernatural God to tell you if you do this. You know, he, he doesn't tell you what's going to happen, but God's not going to tell you to do something without it being a good outcome because he's good all the time. Pray without ceasing. You can pray. Pray all the time. You know, don't forget to pray. Don't. You, you, it actually would be good for you to, to be praying instead of worrying about the situation and rolling it over and over and over in your mind. And, and then in everything, give thanks. Say, Lord, I don't understand, but I just want to thank you for whatever you're doing because you said everything would work out for my good because I love you. So thank you for working this out. Thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for taking such good care of me. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for me. You know, just there's so many things to be thankful for. We got to get our mind off of the present thing that is making us fearful and worrying and stressed and do what God says. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Be at peace among yourselves. Admonish the disorderly, encourage the faint-hearted, support the weak, be long-suffering toward all. Do not render unto anyone evil for evil, but follow after that which is good, one toward another and toward all. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Um, you know, he's telling you so many things for us to do. Instead of being stressed out and angry and even, you know, so far as to worrying about the future, God says, take one day at a time. Put that day in his hands. Get in that secret place every day. Make sure you're reading your Bible every day. Day and night, David said, you know. And then I think it said that, did he worship God like seven times a day? I believe I read that. I mean, can you imagine that? We have to watch that we do not become so distracted and so caught up with our own, you know, I'm going to find pleasure in entertainment or, or I'm going to go to a, a theme park or I'm going to play games or watch TV or video. I mean, there's so many things we can do that take up our time. You could be a gardener that spends 24 hours out in the garden. Well, you don't spend 24 hours out in the garden, but uh, you could be doing even a good thing and not spending any time with God. But I want to be in my garden. I love this. This is like therapy. It's good. It's good for everybody. We get food and we learn things. But even a good thing like that, you know, I'm a, I'm a swimmer. I want to swim. I want to swim eight hours a day. And it, it, it's like, you know, but 
even a good thing if you know we want to have that balance you know making sure God is a priority God says seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you right now one of those all things is you need wisdom from heaven to know what do I do now Lord you know make sure you are seeking him and putting him first place if something is first place in your life it's gonna take precedence over most everything now I'm not saying you ignore your husband I'm not saying you ignore your kids I'm not saying that do it with them <laughs> pray with them you know all of you together you're in a situation we're in a struggle we're in a battle let's get together let's pray that's very powerful in a family so you know what I'm saying but God is good and he cares in the Bible there's another scripture that says God is perfecting all things that concern me well right now this present situation it concerns me and I don't have an answer and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about it but God says he's perfecting it so thank him Lord right there I thank you you're perfecting all things that concern me and this concerns me thank you for perfecting it you see we got to get, get you have to know the word you got to get in your Bible to see see how these scriptures keep coming you know because you put them in your heart God will bring them back to you when you need them you need to fill yourself with the Word of God the more you put the Word of God in the more it'll expel fear and doubt and hopelessness it'll expel that junk in with the good out with the bad you know uh, there's another scripture that says that God will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me put your mind on the Lord how do you do that read your Bible you know listen to some good Christian worship music begin to worship the Lord you know you need a breakthrough I believe that worship in a difficult situation it's always good but worship in a difficult situation is like is, is supernatural I believe it breaks through that darkness that brings that breakthrough you're looking for so I want to read a couple scriptures here um, Jeremiah chapter 29 11 the Lord says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you you're in a difficult situation right now you're in trouble but he says I have plans to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future well God he wants to give you hope and he has a future for you even if this one crumbles that you're in right now and things are going wrong and you, you don't understand why and this wasn't supposed to happen and why did it happen what does the Word of God say always go back to the word you're in trouble what do I do okay God says in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 3 commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed in his heart a man plans his course but the Lord determines his steps I think that might be a different translations to um, we make our plans he orders our steps we have to make plans but ask the Lord say Lord this is what I'm planning on doing but let your will only be done if this is not your will then change my heart change my mind I want your will to be done you know it says here it says Christians facing difficult situations today can take comfort knowing that it is not a promise to always immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives and regardless of our current situation he can work through it to prosper us and give us a hope isn't that what the end result is what you want right I love it Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says God says fear not because you know what when when yucky times come uh, trouble comes whatever it is we have a tendency to get afraid how am I gonna do it now if I can't do that what am I gonna do now this is different than what I know I mean where do I go from here Lord we get a tendency so I love that the Lord says fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you God saying, whatever trouble you're in right now I will help you may that minister powerfully to you right now those words 
Oh, that they would just burn in your heart. God's saying to you right now, I will help you. Wow, take comfort in that. I will uphold you. He's going to uphold you. You're not going to fall. You're not going to fail. All is not lost. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Could you imagine the right hand of God helping you, upholding you? Oh, does it get any better than that? I don't think so. You know, he hides us under the shadow of his wings. We are safe. He is our refuge in times of trouble. Wow. John chapter 14 verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless. Maybe some of you need comforted. Maybe you've gone through a really difficult time for a really long time. He says, I will come to you. Wow. I will come to you? Yeah, the Lord could come to you. Yet a little while and the world sees me no more. But you see me because I live. You shall live also. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. This is what I was saying. God is our refuge. Hallelujah. And he is a stronghold. He is our strength. A very present help in times of trouble. He is our help. Are you in trouble? He's your help right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. He is your help right now. I want to pray for that. And I'll come back to this a little bit. But... He is your help. Well, I'm going to have to have this. My, my phone keeps saying I am just about out. But so I want to pray. I'm going to finish this real quick and then I'm going to pray. Um, and it says, He's always ready to help in times of trouble. That's Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. Oh, I love it. Now I want to tell, say one more little story. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 25, when the disciples. Okay, they were out on the ship. Obviously, Jesus was not with them, and they were in a very, very boisterous storm. Okay, and they were in serious trouble. Okay, did you ever hear that saying about it's the darkest right before the dawn? That's why people should never give up when it's the most, the worst darkness. That means it's it, that dawn is coming. I believe that's what this story is represents or it does to me you know um it wouldn't be too hard to see that listen in the, the disciples one of their darkest times when they were in the storm and jesus wasn't with them they could have very well this could have been it they were in trouble okay what happened jesus comes walking jesus comes walking on the water yeah, Jesus appears right in the middle, the darkest hour. And they say that this probably happened. I was reading this commentary. Happened, they call it the fourth, was it the fourth watch? I think that's what it said. The fourth watch of the night. And they say they think that's between like 3 and 6 a.m., which is right before dawn. The darkest right before dawn. Okay? That's what it, it's saying here. And this storm, this storm could have, it says... It threatened to kill and destroy them. And here comes Jesus walking on the water and he rescues them. So that's what Jesus is going to do for you today if you're in trouble. Okay? Just imagine that you're storm. You're in the boat just like the disciples. And it's dark. And you're in trouble. And whatever it is out there, it's going on. It seems to you threatening that it could harm you or your finances or your family, whatever, or your, your physical self, you know, threatens to harm you in some way, take something away from you or there's a loss. And this looks like the end of something, you know, and you're scared. Probably, I'm sure the disciples were probably very scared and bewildered and, you know, like that. So the storm could represent whatever storm you're going through, whatever trouble is like a storm, right? And here comes Jesus walking on the water. And I'm going to pray that's what he's going to do for you. So I want to pray for salvation. Um, 
before my phone goes. This isn't going to be a very long video, but hopefully I got the <laughs> point across um, how the Lord is a very present help in times of trouble. Not, don't even entertain the thought that he won't show up. He will. He'll come walking on the water. So I want to pray, you know, for you to be born again if you're not born again. John chapter 14 verse 6 says that Jesus, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father God but through him. That's Jesus Christ. So if you want to pray with me, you submit yourself to God right now. Submitting just means I'm giving my life to you. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm yours now, okay? And you want to follow him. So, and you want to repent of your sins. So just say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I, I do repent of my sins. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I do want Jesus Christ to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. And I give you my life. Jesus Christ, you're the Son of God. I know you died and rose again from the dead for me. And I want to make you Lord of my life. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Change me. Forgive me for my sins. I want you to be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Also, I want to pray for anybody that's having trouble right now that Jesus, just imagine this, if you could, whatever trouble you're having, you're in that boat just like the disciples were and the winds and the waves and it's boisterous and it's it's bad and you feel like you're really in trouble and you don't know what to do I'm not telling you what to do I'm telling you to trust in the Lord knowing that he's gonna show up just as he showed up for the disciples in that terrible storm that threatened them to take even their very lives away he showed up walking on the water so praise the lord and that's really cool and i believe that's the same story where jesus said you know lord if that be you bid me to come out to you and he walked on the water and i'm not saying literally try to go walk on water i think it's he's telling you if you keep your eyes on me and not the storm you can walk on water meaning above your situation whatever it is you're going to be victorious because you're not going to sink. You're not going to go under. You're not going to lose whatever it is you don't want to lose. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I pray that right now in the name of Jesus. If you want to agree with me, I pray for you right now. Father, whoever's watching, Lord God, whoever's in trouble, that you would be that very present help in their time of trouble. That just as you did for the disciples, you showed up in the middle of that storm and you saved them. I'm asking you save this person, whoever is watching. God, I ask you save them. Help them, Lord, in this trouble that they're having. Help them to be able to walk on that water, to keep their eyes on you. Because as long as Peter kept his eyes on the Lord, he stayed on top of the water. And remember, as he began, he, at one point, after he was out on the water, walking on the water, he began to look at the waves and the wind again. He got distracted because he started seeing the wind and the waves and the storm and he began to sink because he took his eyes off of Jesus so I pray Father God that who's ever watching that they would keep their eyes focused on you you the only one that can help them to walk on water I pray in Jesus name Father God help them come to their rescue as you did the disciples that night on the water in Jesus name hallelujah thank you Jesus <laughs> okay that's it for now I just hope that you know that encouraged you and just to know that God is there trust him spend time alone with the Lord every day read your Bible every day and you know God is good all the time and he'll work all things out together for good you have to get to a point where you take God at his word. You must believe what the word of God says. You know, we have to believe what we pray. Otherwise, we're just wasting a lot of time for nothing. You won't have to believe. All things are possible to him that believes. The thing about faith and about Christianity is, it's not like, I'll believe it when I see it. 
We have to believe first. And then you're going to see it, the answer to your prayer. And be patient. God is faithful. Another thing to always remember is His timing is perfect. Because God is perfect, everything He does is perfect. He hears your prayers and He will answer them. Just make sure you stay in, walking in love and trust in Him one day at a time. So that's it for today. And I just want to say God bless you. Until next time.